I'm River Bay, and welcome to my gun kingdom. You know, it doesn't seem like it was too long ago. I was sitting around the dinner table with my grandfather and my father and all my uncles and talking about deer hunting. And my grandfather always reminisced about the days of hunting and, and uh, you know, the, the rifle that he talked about all the time for deer hunting was the Winchester model 1894 30 WCF. This is his gun right here. Um, I'm lucky to still have it. And this is his uh, 30, 30, 30. And, um, you know, I think in uh, 1928 or 1926, somewhere around in there, um, they started calling them 30, 30s. But prior to that year, though, they called them the 30, WCF, which is uh, Winchester Center Fire. Now, the 3030 was one of the first uh, smokeless cartridges, and they were great for um, taking any North American game, uh, whether it be deer or moose. Um, so these were the guns to have back then, and uh, you know, I really don't think anything has really changed you know, with, with the best deer hunting guns of 2024 and even into the future. Um, you can't improve on the best. And But anyway, this rifle's in pretty good shape. You know, the stock's pretty nice. And, um, you know, everything has it's got a few little um, areas, um, you know, blemishes and stuff. But other than that, um, it's still a good rifle, but um, now my dad and I would go up to uh, Canada and do moose hunting with the 3030, and the Marlins is, are what we would take along with us. Now, you know, years have gone by, and we sold those uh, Marlin 3030s and. But I just bought this one. This is a model uh, 336 Marlin, JM stamped. It's a 1979, and the guy I bought it off of really took excellent care of the gun. And I would say it's probably 99% on the bluing and 99% on the stock. Um, this gun could actually go in a museum. But um, these are the guns that um, you know we took up to Canada and. Uh, Got a lot of moose. Um, we each got one, uh, usually, and uh, but you know, those were the days that uh, you know that we just enjoyed these guns, and you know I still do. Um, now I live in a state that requires straight wall cartridges while hunting deer, so the other second best gun, or or the gun that's equal to the Marlin. 3030 or any Winchester 3030 would be the uh, 444 and this is what I use in the state of Ohio since they only allow straight wall cartridges. Now if I had my choice and there wasn't restrictions on um, either a bottleneck or a straight wall cartridge I would have to flip a coin because I like both guns. I like both cartridges. They're the best uh, for deer hunting by far hands down no matter what other calibers in the future they invent. The 3030 is always going to be around, and the 444, if you live in a, in a state that requires straight wall cartridges, always gonna be around. And, you know, let me know in the comments section below if you're having trouble finding ammunition for either, either gun. With the internet nowadays, you know, ammo is all over the place that you can find. And um, I don't want to mention any companies that carry, and there's a lot of companies, but if you leave me a comment, I'll get back with you and let you know. Okay, so with this Marlin 444, you know, to show you what it can do at, um, 
300 yards, I hit the bullseye. Uh, now, of course, it was a no wind condition, but still, you know, it was to show the drop that the 444 has at 300 yards. So the max distance you would probably want to shoot a 444 would be about 200 yards max. And then you're going to have about, you know, if you have your rifle zeroed in at 100 yards, it'll probably have around 6 to 8 inch drop somewhere in there. And I have a video on that too that you can watch. It's, um, it's deer at 200 yards uh, here on the channel here. But um, anyway, uh, now this rifle is all set up for um, hunting. And it does have a recoil pad on it, but you know, it doesn't really need a recoil pad on it because when you're hunting deer, you're usually wearing warm, thick clothes and you really don't need a, a recoil pad. And you're only use, maybe taking one shot, you know, or two shots at the most. And after they get old, they get, they get hard and they get brittle. So they're not that much help anyway. But also somebody wrote in about the rings that I use here. And these rings are on here for a reason. These are sight through rings. So if I had to use my iron sights, uh, and I have on three occasions, and if I wouldn't have had these see through rings, I would have missed three doe. Uh, because, you know, you know, the weather um, it is not dependable and sometimes it's misty it's rainy and and the glass will fog up on these scopes sometimes and I know there's fog free stuff that you can put on your scope and everything but I never found any that really worked well so you know and if something if you would ac accidentally you know drop the gun or or hit it up against a tree it's always a good you know good idea to have backup see-through rings and uh, so, if I wouldn't have had those, I would have missed three doe. So, I'm glad that I have them. I mean, they're ugly. Yeah, they don't look the greatest. But this is a hunting gun, and, and that's what it's for. So, but anyway, if you want to watch the video on, on the 300 yards where I demonstrate that, uh, it's on my channel also. But anyway, this video is about the 30-30. The but if you live in a state that requires the straight wall cartridge, your 444 is your best bet. I would Now, I would have a hard time deciding on what rifle to use if I was able to use either cartridge. Let's say I was visiting somebody and I could use a 3030. I'd have a hard time deciding whether to use a 3030 or the 444. Now, one advantage this has is that it's a 20 inch barrel where the 444 is a 24 inch barrel so you know they're both woods guns you know for woods and this is a little bit shorter four inches shorter so you know i guess if i was going to go out and hunt in tight cover i probably would choose the the 3030 then but it would be a hard decision for me to do okay so if we look at this gun too this gun is set up for hunting no recoil pad it doesn't need one you know and these are nice for the whole family you take your wife hunting deer this is this is a great gun for everybody to use for deer hunting because it has such a light recoil and the 444 would be you know a heavier recoil gun for sure uh, you can see that in my videos but also i have the see-through rings on this um, gun too so anyway um this was my grandfather's choice and my uncle's choice and my father's choice and for especially for moose too but since we lived in Ohio we had to either use slugs out of a shotgun uh, a handgun um, straight wall cartridge again or the 444 so um, but these are the you know these guns have held the record for the most deer taken, the 3030, for over 125 years. So it's been in existence for a long time. It's proven, okay? Deer are thin-skinned animals. They're not gonna change. So deer hunting and deer are not going to change and neither should the rifles, okay? So all these new cartridges coming up in the future or the ones now um, you know i i love ars too i got five ars but that doesn't mean i would hunt with them uh, they're not really a hunting gun these are a woods gun they're made for hunting okay 
And so this is my choice, um, the 3030, or if you live in a state that requires a straight wall cartridge, the 444. Okay, so this video is dedicated to the 3030. I just brought these other ones along to uh, show you and share with you. But what we're going to do now is we're going to go out to the range and we're going to shoot the 3030. And since I just bought this 3030, we're going to have to zero it in. So um, what we'll do is we'll start out at the 50 yard range and most manufacturers of scopes recommend sighting it in on the highest power at 50 yards. And then we'll move down. I'll do another video on maybe the, I'll go straight to the 200 yard range with it. But anyway, um, look for several videos on the 3030 eventually here on the channel. But anyway, I appreciate you joining me and I look forward to sharing the shooting experience with this. And, you know, another question that you might have is, will the 3030 ever be replaced by another, by another cartridge? for hunting deer and I seriously doubt it and I read one day where 3030 might be harder to find so people are buying other guns that use different calibers and because they're more readily available but you know what I walked into my store probably 20 minutes from me and they had probably 15 20 boxes of of um, the Hordendy uh, FTX 160 grain 3030 so they're available um, and they're available on the internet too and so you know your 170 green would be uh, Remington makes it 170 green and that would be for moose and then your 150 green would be for deer and then that would be the choice my choice 150 I, if I couldn't get Hordendy but I, I would rather hunt with Hordendy they're a 160 grain, and Hordendy has raised the BC very much on their shell, the FTX, and those are the lever revolution, and we'll go over those at the range too, but those are safe to use in a lever gun. So, but anyway, I don't think the 3030 will ever be replaced. It will always be the most popular gun to use for deer hunting, and also the most effective caliber to use for deer hunting, and today, or even in the future, hands down, no matter what other people use or whatever. It's just, it's, it's the best gun. And then the best gun for a state that requires straight wall cartridges is your 444. So what do you say we go out to the range and enjoy a day shooting the 3030? Thanks for joining me. We're gonna start here at the 50 yard range. And um, we're going to use, um, two different types of ammo. Uh, the first one we're gonna shoot is the Remington. Um, uh, these are the uh, 170 grain. Now this would be something that you would use for moose, you know, larger game um, than deer. So if you wanna choose the Remington for your hunting cartridge, I would go with the uh, 150 grain for deer. And then we're going to, once we get it on paper with the, with the Remington, then I'll switch over to the uh, Hordendy uh, Lever Revolution. Now, these are 160 grain, and Hordendy has raised up the BC quite a bit on these shells. These are the FTX. These are safe to use in lever guns. All right, uh, they have the soft tips on them. All right, so anyway, um, since they raised the BC level up on this, this, this sets the 3030 way uh, a, a far advanced than, than the other ammo that you would might want to choose for deer. So this would probably be the best one to hunt deer with. And so once we get it on paper with the Remington, uh, we'll switch over to the Hordendy 160 grain. 3030. Now, I always recommend zeroing your rifle in with the ammo that you're going to hunt with because as you'll probably notice here, we have the chronograph set up and also we'll probably see um, a bullet rise once we switch over to the Hordendy. All right, so let's, let's first start with the Remington and see how we do and get it on paper. And we're going to shoot at the top target first. And 
I'm going to go ahead and double up here. All right. Top target. I'm going to put my crosshairs right at the bottom of the bullseye. Here we go. Check that. Okay. The first one I fired was twenty two sixty or twenty two fifty. Nope, 2260. And then the second one I fired was 2270. Okay, let's try that. The 3030 has such a nice recoil. why you don't see a recoil pad on it. You really don't need one. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna... I'm gonna put the crosshairs right in the middle. Middle of the bullseye now. With the crosshairs. Here we go. Here we go. I think that's about right next to the bulls that it looks like. Okay, again, the cross here is right in the middle of the bullseye. That hit the bullseye. Yeah, getting back to the, uh, you know, if you need a recoil pad, I, I just don't really like a recoil pad on a hunting gun. Uh, because when you're hunting, especially deer, you don't, you have on a lot of winter clothes. Let's go one click over. There's one click. You got a lot of winter clothes on and adding a pad. I mean, it's not gonna really do you that much good, you know, to add a recoil pad. And if you're gonna sight in a gun, you know, this is a bag of shot nine shot in here it weighs 25 pounds and you know this absorbs a lot of the uh, of the recoil now they recommend too when you use a lead sled don't use anything heavier than a 25 pound bag of shot okay or anything that weighs 25 pounds don't go any heavier this, the gun's got to move back a little bit okay so be careful with that but you know getting back to when you when you sight in a rifle you know in a scope you 
you want to use a lead sled or a bag or something and you don't want to shoot off hand or anything like that. Number one, ammo is expensive and number two, if you really want to get a good zero with your scope, I mean you're going to have to put it in some kind of device and hold it or on a bag. Okay, let's get this sled pointing in the right direction here. All right. So, I got one more here, the Remington. All right. And anytime you mess around with the, uh, of course you know this, keep your fingers out of the, uh, out of the trigger guard. And I would say this is this trigger is probably about six pounds. Okay, here we go. Right in the middle of bullseye here. <laughs> you know, I think I touched that other shot. Okay, 2256. Our average is 2218 with the Remington. So again, I would use these for a bigger animal than a than a uh, deer. You could go with any North American game with a 3030. Anything in North America, I wouldn't go um, on with you know hunting dangerous game with the 30-30 of course you in a lot of parts of Africa they require I think the minimum is a 375 H&H &H Magnum okay so all right so we didn't mess with the elevation at all lucky all right so let's go ahead and switch over to the lever Revolution and like I said, Hordenday really uh, raised up the BC on these shells. All right, let's take a look at these two. Look at the look at the difference. How more aerodynamic the Hordenday is here. And these are 160 grain, and these are 170. But look at the difference there. Wow. All right, I'm loving it already. I'm excited. All right, so let's go ahead and and they've got the soft flex tips on there and let's load five. We're gonna have some fun here. Okay, shooting the Hordney Lever Revolution, 160 grain. Well, let's stay on that top target. We know where the other ones are here. Oh. Okay. Might go in the same hole. I'm, I'm expecting these. Now I'm gonna place the bowl. I'm gonna place the crosshairs right right in the center of the bullseye, okay? So we're expecting a rise here. I'm going to guess where it's gonna hit is on top of the bullseye maybe. Oh, it shot over to the right. Did I pull that? Okay. Let me see what the feet per second was. Well. Twenty-two 
2327. So you can see we're faster. So the last shot that I did with the Remington was 2256, and then this one was 2327. So, and it went over to the right, high and to the right. Let's shoot another one. I might have pulled that. I don't know. Nope. Okay, so see what I mean about, um, I'm not gonna mess with the elevation, but I'm gonna have to bring it back to the left. But see what I meant about the, uh, always practicing with, with the uh, ammo that you're gonna hunt with, because see the difference? <clears throat> That was 2369, and the last one we shot with the Remington was 2256. So a little over 100 feet per second faster. Okay, so that's why we have that bullet rise. And then, but I'm not sure why it went over to the right, because we have like five mile an hour winds here. Well, let's go and move it back over to the left now. Okay, and let me look in the spotting scope and make sure here. Oh, yeah. So we're going to have to go back over. Let's go back over 10 clicks. the left okay I got three shells left here okay again crosshairs right in the center of the bullseye Go. That shot high, we moved it over to the left, but still shooting high, isn't it? That's because that bullet rise. Yep. So let's bring it over two clicks to the left. And we're gonna have to bring down the elevation since we're these are faster. Alright, so see what the feet per second was on that one 2350 so we've had 2369 2327 and this was 2350 I'm gonna be positive here and say we're not gonna to have to adjust the wind each again all right so but let's bring that elevation down here. Oh, let's bring it down. Let's start out with six clicks. There's six clicks down. Okay, here we go. Looks like I hit too low now. Let's take a look in the... 
Oh, it's touching the bottom of the bullseye. Let's raise it up two clicks. I think we should stay on this upper target now because we might be hitting them in the holes pretty soon. And that was 23.30 feet per second on that last one. Oh, I think we'll be able to tell. Here we go. Shot high again. Hmm. That was twenty three fifty one feet per second. Okay, let's try this again. There it is. I think we got her. Yep. I don't think I'm going to mess around with the adjustments anymore. Let's go on to the, let's go on to the, uh, our, the wind's kicked up now, so we're going to shoot a few more here. in the bullseye now. That's it. All right, we're zeroed in. Uh, I want to thank you for watching and uh, please leave a comment down below and tell me what cartridge you like for deer. But uh, I think the two best guns of, of all time 
yeah, or the 444 if you live in a state that requires straight wall cartridges. You can't go wrong with the 444. And if you live in a state that allows um, bottleneck cartridges, uh, and, and if you have a thick woods that you hunt in, the 30-30 is a 20-inch barrel. Perfect for that. And uh, But if you travel out of state to deer hunt, take both with you. Take the 444 and the 30-30, because if I had my, it would be, it would be, I'd flip a coin to which gun I would use. So, you know, but uh, the best of 2024, um, still today um, and in the future, because deer hunting's not going to change and deer are not going to change. They're, they're a thin skinned animal and 444 is perfect. Uh, for, the, for deer and also the 3030. Use the important uh, 160 grain. Now, I think that's perfect. But the gun in on with the uh, the sight your gun in with the ammo that you intend to hunt with. But uh, uh, I appreciate you uh, joining me today and make sure you hit that subscribe button. There's always future content coming up and hit the like button and also share this with your friends and hit that notification bell. Thanks again for watching.